Hello and welcome to the next installment of our Saratech Enablement Series. My name is Andrea Hall and I'm the Marketing Operations Manager here at Saratech and I'll be your host today. Presenting today, we have Mark Anderson and he is an Applications Engineer here at Saratech and he'll be teaching some tips and tricks about NXCAM. Next slide. Hello, my name is Mark Anderson. Oh, sorry, Mark. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. So first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the marketing, the Saratech Enablement Series before Mark gets started. Um, we've had such great success with this series. Uh, we're here. It's a free online training on the first and third Thursday of each month. It's at 11 a.m. Pacific um, or 2 p.m. Eastern for people like me. Uh, we usually run about 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. It just kind of depends on the amount of questions we get and things like that. Um, and we are always, we always lead these sessions by um, the best, you know, subject matter experts. Uh, sometimes they're from Saratech, some, sometimes they're experts from, uh, from outside of Saratech. We cover lots of uh, different topics, including CMAP, NX, Solid Edge, Team Center, and much, much more. And next slide. And our goal uh, for this enablement series is really just to help you get the most out of the software that you own. Um, we like to share knowledge amongst each other and really just to build a community of users that will help empower each other to, you know, get the most out of their software. And as always, this is an open forum, so we look forward to you participating in the training. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can type them in the chat box over to the right uh, or the questions box. Uh, and I will kindly interrupt Mark and let him know that we have questions or comments and he can answer them right on the spot there. Um, and then after the session is over, we ask that you stick around for about 10, 15 seconds and just fill out a quick survey. Uh, let us know how we did. Let us know um, if you have any suggestions for future sessions that you'd like to see. And um, with that, I'm going to pass the baton over to Mark. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mark Anderson, and as Andrea stated, I'm an Applications Engineer with Saratech. Uh, I specialize in NXCAM, and today we are going to work on feature-based manufacturing. And what a lot of customers don't realize is the power that they have at their fingertips out of the box with NX. It is available in every package, 2.5D and above. And what the feature-based manufacturing does is it takes and it recognizes features of the part I'm sorry, it recognizes features of the part to where it goes through a knowledge editor so that it creates operations and gathers tooling, sets speeds and feeds and depths of cut that are indicative of how you machine at your shop. So what we would do is I'm going to go through the different mechanics of the feature-based uh, manufacturing. It incorporates the material resource library or the tooling data library if you're not in a managed mode. It uses the machining knowledge editor, and it goes through the machining data libraries, and those make up the brain of feature-based manufacturing. Then we'll do a live demonstration, and then we'll go through a review. So here's the first components of feature-based manufacturing. If you're using a straight out of the box NX, then it uses the tool data library, or the tool library, I'm sorry. And NX has uh, a large amount of tools that come out of the box in their tool database, whether that be end mills, T cutters, face mills, a lot of tools. It also uses the, in managed mode, the material resource library. And that would be in Team Center, which you can incorporate or import in different uh, vendor catalogs complete. Then it goes through the machining data libraries and it, that makes up your depth of cut, speeds, feeds, surface footage, things of that nature. Then it goes through the machining knowledge editor, and it goes through rules to where you, you place in rules for certain features can use certain operations and certain tooling to accomplish them. Now let's go ahead and do an uh, automated programming program live demonstration. So here you can see NX. I pulled up this. It's, this is just a standard plate, and that would be indicative of any type of die shop, leading plates, strippers, 
uh, thing, things like that. And these, these plates really showcase what feature-based manufacturing can do. And this is out of the box. I haven't done anything to the machining knowledge editor or set any type of conditions on my own. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go file. And I know there's a lag, so I'm going to slow my mouse clicks down so you can see. New manufacturing template. We'll just use general reference to the existing part. This brings us into manufacturing. And there's only two things that you must do before we can use feature-based manufacturing. We go into our geometry view, and we must set a workpiece so that the system understands the end result that we're trying to accomplish. And we'll just give it a bounding block. And as you know in NX, it will not give you tool path unless there's material there. So we'll give it five millimeter material on the top surface there. Now we go up here in our, our ribbon, and we hit this Find Feature button. What this does is it runs through the feature feature nav or the feature editor, and it looks for any features that comes with NX, whether it be holes, two-step holes, counterbores, things of that nature, which is called parametric recognition. We're going to tell it to search the entire workpiece, and we're going to tell it to use the recognized features. We'll specify a vector. We want it to machine top down. And then we're going to hit Find Features. Now, as this is going through the feature, nav feature library, it's looking at all these different features. It's interrogating the model, and it's finding what types of features can be manufactured or recognized in NX. And in this box down here, we can go through each individual item that was found. So these are items that we can't machine from the top, so we'll remove it. And you just can scroll through and see the different options and different items that had been found inside of NX. We'll hit OK here. Now this gives us all of our different options, or all of our different items, I should say, that, that were found. So we'll search through them, find them. So it, as you can see, it's found all the different features. We'll do a group select by holding the Shift key and we'll hit Create Feature Process. Now it's finding, it's running through the Machining Knowledge Editor. It's going through the first two phases of that, and it's looking through this knowledge library at all the different roles in the Machining Knowledge Editor. And it's going through all of these different operation types to create the operations that's needed to be able to manufacture this part. We'll tell it automatically put, place the geometry where it needs to be. We'll hit OK. Now it's running through the machining knowledge editor now to generate the operations. It's taking the tools from the tool library, it's adjusting the speed, speeds, depth of cuts, and it's placing all the parameters and the operations that are needed. So now we'll go into the manufacturing navigator, expand this. And you can see we have all of our operations, our tools. Now we just need to generate them. So now this is just standard post-processing with NX, or I'm sorry, operation pr processing. So as it's going through processing this tool path, you can see on screen that it's processing it all. We can now go through and look in the program order view to see how it's going to machine this. So you see we have our slots. It did our slots first, which we know we would like to do our face milling first. And it's going to do slots. And if you notice the slots, it shows the wrong projection vector. So you have to go in and modify this slightly. But that's a lot of power for, for just being able to hit a few buttons. Now we're going to generate these new operations in the way that we want it to machine it. And we'll give you a good verification so that you can see how well manu uh, feature-based manufacturing does out of the box. 3D dynamic, slow down for you. So there we have to give it, go in this operation, this face milling operation. Tell it that we wanted a percentage. We 
refresh these operations. Then we verify this toolpath, and what we'll we'll have is we'll ha we will have a feature-based manufactured part that the system found all of the features, set the tools, set the operations, and completely program the part with very little intervention from me. Now, what this does for us is it makes it to where if if we purchase the machining knowledge editor add-on. We can go in and manipulate those rules to where we could use only tools that are in our tool crib. And we've seen that companies have done a lot of data analysis on setting up tooling for each individual job or setting up a machine tool that can do many, many jobs with that tooling. It's much more economical to do many jobs with the tooling in the machine than it is to set up machines for the jobs. And you can very highly refine that with the machining knowledge editor to where it's push button programs. So that is feature based manufacturing for, for this part. And if you don't want to go, if you want to use feature based manufacturing in the smallest uh, amount, if you run just the first initial phases of feature based manufacturing, if you just find features and let it find all the features, then it gives you a, a, a structure already. It gives you geometry groups that you can use in programming. So if you just let it do the, the feature-based menu, the uh, feature recognition, it'll give you these feature groups that you can then in turn use in your operations. So it gives you this feature group to use instead of having to create your own feature groups or to select that geometry multiple times. So if you run feature-based manufacturing up front, it'll develop your feature groups for you to program easily and you'll have a very uh, streamlined and organized program. Or you can go to its ex extremely other side of that, that category and you can fully automate your, your programming. So let's do a small review. The feature-based manufacturing highlights. It, the feature recognition options, it can find uh, in a, a whole array of different features. You can also go in and teach it features. The only thing that you, when you teach it the features, you can teach it the operation and you can teach it the tooling to use. So you can have individual features that you have taught into the library out of the box with NX. But what you can't do is you can't go in and modify the rules so that it in incorporates many different size features to use that same operation and tooling. That's where you need the, the feature, the machining knowledge editor add-on. Now this is a business value review. When you do this type of programming with current systems, it takes 20 minutes to do. Programming with feature, <coughs> excuse me, feature-based manufacturing, three minutes. NX CAM automated using consistent programming for all the features time after time equals value, value equals consistent repeatable programming time after time and better cost estimating. So if you do this type of job twice a week, three-tenths of an uh, hour per plate, to make a long story short, you're saving $24,000 using NX feature-based manufacturing alone for plate-style manufacturing. So in summary, your feature-based manufacturing is very strong out of the box, and people don't know the power that they have because they just haven't either seen it or they, they just don't know if it's something that they can implement. Uh, use feature-based manufacturing to just generate your program groups and the structure of your program and then manipulate that as needed. Machining Knowledge Editor can be configured to automatically generate your operations using tooling that you have in your tool crib so you don't have to program to a specific tool and then go purchase it. And a full fully integrated MRL, MKE, and machining data library will allow feature-based manufacturing to be fully automated that can produce programs in minutes compared to hours. And then your machining knowledge editor is fully customizable to fit your requirements for repeatable and dependable tooling selection and operation creation that you can trust. Our next session is going to be on Team Center, auditing and reviewing the design change. That's going to be May 18th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Here are some of our um, social networks that you may you can find us on. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Andrea for any type of questions. Feel free. 
and I'll answer them best I can. <clears throat> Thank you. Great job, Mark. Um, yeah, please make sure you check us out on, on Facebook. We have uh, events listed on there for all of our upcoming uh, webinars and, and training sessions and things like that. Um, there's also some, some groups on LinkedIn. And of course, YouTube is very important. Make sure that you uh, <clears throat> subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you are aware of any upcoming, uh, any of the past sessions that we've had. Um, we're also planning on adding some other short videos to YouTube. So if you subscribe, um, you don't have to be on the lookout for those. They will just automatically appear um, when you log into uh, to YouTube. So uh, make sure you check us out on all of those. And like I said, we would really appreciate it if you would stick around for a couple of minutes after, uh, after we close out this session and fill out the survey and let us know uh, if you have any suggestions for future webinars. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.